Hello, this is Vic. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for viewing my videos today. I'm in the beautiful and exotic island of Bora Bora here in the Pacific Ocean. Bora Bora is, of course, part of French Polynesia. Now, right after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941 and early 1942, the Americans established a supply depot here in Bora Bora for fuel and military materials for their upcoming campaigns against the Japanese in the Pacific. They fortified the island with four sites of two guns each. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we videotaped a site on the eastern coast of Bora Bora by the Futi Peninsula. In this particular documentary, we're going to visit the two guns on the northern side of the island, right by the wharf of Fare Piti, as it is called here in Bora Bora. Let's go for a tour. We're going to learn quite a few things about these guns and also quite a few historical things as well. You will enjoy this documentary. Let's go. Now let's uh, orient ourselves before we climb the hill and before we find the American guns from the Second World War. I am at the Fare Piti Wharf, which is a couple of kilometers directly north from the capital of Bora Bora, the town of Vaitape. Now this wharf or this pier that you see here was constructed by the Americans in 1942 for the sole purpose of importing the war materials and the fuel that they needed for the campaign against the Japanese. Now this wharf has been improved of course over the years and it's still, it is still used for importing materials into Bora Bora. This is the only port by the way in Bora Bora. You can see a cargo ship coming into port right now as we speak. Now the guns and the hill where the guns are located at, the road that will lead us to the guns is uh, maybe two to three hundred meters away from here. So let's go find the road and let's climb up on the hill and let's find the guns. Come on. And uh, about 300 meters as you take the road, the main road, after you pass the wharf of Fare Piti, and as you take the road towards the northern end of Bora Bora, on the right side you will see this dirt road here. And the book says it's about a 15 minute climb to the top somewhere up there to find the guns. So bring lots of water and lots of energy in case you decide to go through this adventure. So let's go and see what we're gonna find up there. Let's do it. So this is the path I have uh, taken so far. You can see how steep the climb has been so far. Now in the far distance, the uh, sea water that you see is the Bay of Fanui. F-A-A-N-U-I. So look how steep it has been. And look what is ahead of me. Right up there. Let's go. Well, finally I have reached the peak of the hill. I must have climbed well over a kilometer. Very, very steep incline in 36 degrees Celsius or about 92 degrees Fahrenheit for my American friends. Here's the view of a Motu or one of the islands that surround Bora Bora. And right there you can see the beautiful and the very famous lagoon, or part of it anyway. Absolutely fantastic views from up here, and I shouldn't be far from the cannons. Let's go find them. And uh, finally, after a mile or a kilometer and a half of climbing, finally I reached the uh, top of the hill. 
what you're looking at here is the observation platform built by the Americans in 1942. We're going to go inside a little later. And here's a gun on the left side, right there. Here's the other one on the right side. So let's go look at this one first. And then we're going to look at the other one as well. They both seem to be in perfect shape. Let's get closer to this one. And here's the first view of the first gun that we find here at the northern end of Bora Bora. It is perfectly intact. Look at it. In perfect shape. It doesn't show any signs of damage from an attack and that's because the Japanese never really attacked Bora Bora. And all the mechanisms for rotating the gun, loading it, and raising it up and down are almost intact. Now this piece really belongs in a museum. If you clean it up and remove some of the graffiti, it is in perfect condition. And the views are absolutely outstanding. Let's go closer and identify the area. It is pointing northwest. Right there in the middle of the frame is the wharf of Fare PT that I showed you earlier. And in the far distance you see a motu or an atoll with a resort. You can see the bungalows on stilts in the water. So absolutely beautiful views from up here, from this site. Let's look at it a little closer. Let's climb on the platform. And here's a gun, 20 centimeters, the size of the barrel. It could reach about 10 kilometers in distance the shells could reach that far, which is about six miles. Now some books would tell you this is a seven inch, some books would tell you this is an eight inch. So let's settle the argument and call it a 20 centimeter gun. These guns that you see here were also used in the American Navy. So if you see pictures of battleships, of the Second World War, most likely they carried this gun as well. And uh, here is a second gun, which is now pointing towards the western, northwestern direction, right there. This one is in perfect condition as well. And that's the other gun that you see right there in the distance. The distance between the two guns is about 20 meters or 60 feet. So they're not that far apart from each other. Now this gun here, we have protected the town of Vaitape, which is the capital of Bora Bora, and also the town of Fanui. F-A-A-N-U-I, which was the place where the American personnel stayed at. That was the American base here in Bora Bora. The town of Fanui, which still exists, but there's nothing left from the American period of 1942 to 1946. So here's the gun in perfect, perfect condition. Now, when I published my very first video, a few weeks ago, somebody sent me an email and asked me what year these guns were manufactured and what year. And uh, I will try right now to identify the marks on the cannon that will indicate the year. But you can see it's in perfect condition. A little bit of graffiti, nothing serious. All the mechanisms for loading, raising the gun, 
rotating it, of course it could be rotated 360 degrees. So even if it points west, northwest, it doesn't mean it could not be rotated and it could point south as well. But let's see if we can identify the year that these, these guns were manufactured at. Here's a good view. Let's get on the platform. You can see the beautiful views in the distance. This one is pointing at a very small atoll. Right there, barely 150 meters in diameter. The atolls here in Bora Bora are called Motu. M-O-T-U. But let's see if we can find the exact year by looking carefully around the gun. Now before we look at the writing in the back of the cannon to identify the year and the model of the cannon, very very quickly, somebody here conceived a brilliant idea a few years back to come over here and to paint the cannons in deep brown color. Well, it was good as far as maintenance for the cannon goes, but what it achieved is that it has covered all the markings of the cannons and there are very few left that we can find and I think we're going to be lucky with a cannon on the right so let's go see what we can find and let's read the writings on it come on so here's the cannon on the right and here's the back of the cannon this is the area that would be used to load the shell before firing and this is where we're going to concentrate we're going to turn the macro function of the Sony camera Let's get very close and let's see what we can find in this area right here. Right there where the markings are, the graffiti markings. And right there, right between the two names, the graffiti names, there is something marked on the gun and I'm going to read it to you now. It says 7 inch breech mechanism Mark 1, Model 2, Number 3. So that solves the controversy as far as the size of the barrel of this gun. And now we know it is a 7 inch and not an 8 inch gun. But there are more markings here. Let's go find them and read them because now we can figure out the year the gun was made. At. Come on. And finally we find the markings that would inform us as far as the year of manufacturing. And what it says here is Naval Gun, Naval Gun Factory, there's a comma, WNY. I'm not sure what WNY means, maybe Western New York. Then below that it says Inspector SPF, and below that it says 1905. 1905? That's strange. So far we learned a couple of very useful pieces of information. We confirmed that this is a 7 inch gun and not an 8 inch as some sources in the inter internet mention. That would make it about 18 centimeters in diameter, the barrel size that is. So that settles that. I was also correct when I said that these guns were used in the Navy as well in the battleships because in the back, as you saw, it says naval gun. What about the 1905? That's very, very curious because this gun was manufactured 37 years before it was installed here. Now, you would have thought after the end of the First World War that the uh, technology for gun manufacturing would have advanced tremendously, and that's incorrect. All over the Pacific, we find guns that were manufactured in the beginning of the 20th century, and they fought a very hard battle against the Japanese in the 1940s, it was only after the Second World War when technology really took off tremendously. As an example, when we uh, visited the island of Beso or Betio in Kiribati or Kiribati and videotaped the battle of the Tarawa Atoll, we saw Japanese guns all around the island of Beso that were sold to the Japanese in the beginning of the 20th century by the British. Those were the Vikers 20 centimeter guns. And they were sold to the Japanese by the British so the Japanese could use them against their war in 1905 against the Russians. 
Now, of course, they used them against the Russians in 1905, and they used them against the British and the Americans in the 1940s, same exact guns. How interesting. Okay, so here's the gun on the left side, and the gun on the right side. And here's the observation post that was built by the Americans in 1942, and it is completely intact. Uh, somebody had the brilliant idea of painting it brown and gray. There's a little bit of rubbish all over here from the visitors, but inside it is in perfect condition right there. Now the size is about three meters by three meters. It's not a big structure. So no more than four or five people would be in here at one time. This concrete column that you see here most likely would have supported a, a set of binoculars so they can uh, observe the area around Bora Bora here. Here's the gun on the left, you can see behind the trees. Here's the gun on the right, behind the tree, right there in the middle of the frame. You can see some uh, marks on the wall, not the graffiti, but some older marks. They may be back from the war era. Here's another view of this uh, structure here. So you can imagine bored American soldiers sitting here observing the lagoons below for any activity. Of course, nothing ever happened. And what's really curious is that this observation post and the guns were maintained here by the Americans after they left in 1946. Of course, as we saw with the radar station they had here, they blew it up before they left, but they maintained these structures intact. Let's go out. And here's a very last view of one of the guns here in Bora Bora. I would like to thank you for joining me in my channel, for viewing my videos. I think during the last two videos that we covered the uh, Second World War American gun placements here in Bora Bora, we learned quite a bit. And once again, thank you for joining me. This is Vic all the way from Bora Bora. Bye bye.